Here we go. Viewers and subscribers, welcome back to Beat in the Press podcast. I am your host, Rafa. Now, coming up in today's podcast, we are going to be reviewing the big game which took place over the weekend. Man City versus Arsenal playing to a dull draw. And one of the highest scoring games, uh, Newcastle running away 4-3 winners over West Ham. Now joining me this evening to review these matches and to talk some EPL football, we have returning to the podcast, JJ. Big up, big up, guys. Respect. Thanks for bringing me back. We also have the big Arsenal fan, Christoph, all in his Arsenal kit this evening. Good to be back, viewers. Yes, indeed, gents. Welcome back to the podcast. And as usual, we're going to kick things off by looking at who are the feature games on the weekend. We're going to start, JJ, with the Newcastle coming from behind to beat West Ham 4-3 at St. James's Park. Talk to us about that one, JJ. How did you see what that a, game? And what are your thoughts on these two teams? What a game. I mean, wow. You know what I mean? It's um, And big up everybody. You know, hope everybody's doing good. Peace and love to everybody. But, yeah, that game, Newcastle needed something. I mean, Eddie Howe is under so much pressure. He's probably going to get fired. That team is decimated with injuries. No excuses. Same thing with West Ham. They're kind of dealing with the same thing. They're still in the in the hunt for the um, – I think they're in the Europa League, right, still? That's right. That's right. So, I mean, it's what a game. But I just thought Newcastle in the end had enough to win. So, I, it was just – I just predicted that they were going to win the game anyways, and they did, so. It yeah, fun. definitely. Uh, two teams which haven't really been uh, firing all season. You know, they've been having an up and down season. And of course, defensively, it's not the Newcastle we have known, you know, in terms of their performance last season. Uh, this season, as you mentioned, uh, a number of their key players are out injured. But man, one of their key centre-back, Trippier as well, uh, you know, dealing with some injuries. Of course, the midfield, again, you know, it's a chop and change. Tonelli, you know, have been suspended all season and he was one of their top midfielders. So that... And Joe, Joe, Joe Linton, I mean, he Joe plays... Linton, right. That energy in the, the midfield. Six. Yeah, that's so right. He, so he has gone. been missing as well. So, you mm -hmm. know, it's like the results have followed the injury pattern, you know, and they've had some good performances and then some awful performances as well. And this was one of the better performances, I must say, really coming from behind, really digging in and coming up with the goods. Two brilliant strike there from uh, Barnes coming off the bench and a brace of penalties from Isak. That was enough to get them over the line versus the spirited West Ham team. But Christoph, I'll come to you on this one. I mean, what's your view on these two games? I mean, these two teams and the result in general? Um, I thought it was a brilliant game for the neutrals. Um... I don't think anybody did anything particularly well. What what was really good was the quality of the finishing on display there. Um, the chances that were presented to both teams were taken exquisitely. And, you know, people will be talking about this game for a while. Ah, indeed. Yes, definitely. Uh, some quality goals coming there. A brace from Barnes, as mentioned before. Uh, who does getting on the score sheet as well? And Bowen along with Antonio for West Ham. And as mentioned, it, these were some clinical strikes, you know, top shelf type finishing in all honesty. And, you know, having gone 3-1 up, one would have thought West Ham would have held on for the win. But they end up on the losing end, not even a draw, but giving up, you know, some late chances. And that man again, Calvin Phillips Christoph was at the heart of the shenanigans, you know, bringing down a player inside the box and really, <laughs> you know, he's been having an awful season in all honesty. What, what's your thoughts on this Calvin Phillips transfer, Christoph, from Man City to West Ham? Well, I, I think um, his poor season is not down to him being a poor player, per se. I think his confidence has just been so eroded at his time at City that, you know, we're seeing it reflected on the pitch. Um, we might see it continuing because uh, if you take a look at another player who I I would say confidence might have been eroded, but he seems to have found his way back. You know, look at uh, Harry Maguire. You know, Harry Maguire did well before going to United, did horribly at United for years, and now he is probably 
potentially on the, the list of United's best players this season. So I think it's just a case of his confidence has just been so decimated. We're seeing that reflected on the pitch. It might be a, a case to build his confidence back up by starting him on the bench and then bringing him into games. That was the case in this one, and I, I don't think the result would have helped his confidence any one bit, you know. Uh, you know, it's been a downhill spiral ever since that move from Leeds. But in my opinion, Christoph, I mean, with Calvin Phillips being at Man City for a number of years, he seemed as if he was comfortable with the role on the bench and not playing. We did not hear much from him from the Man City camp, JJ, he seemed comfortable collecting his salary and just chilling on the bench. I mean, what say you, JJ? What's your thoughts on, on, on Phillips? I, I mean, he's a young player. Um, and like you said, he, the, the move from Leeds, maybe as a young player, you need to play. Um, and so he needs to find games. You know, he's he's getting, he's 28 years old now. So he's almost at the back of his career. Yeah, I mean, um, at 28, you should be playing your best football, in all honesty. The, you should be right. at the peak of your powers at 28. Right, I mean, yes. once you hit 30, then you're at the top think, of the hill. I think with West Ham, the amount of games they have left, they'll they'll need him you know, coming down the stretch, and it's going to be up to him. I don't know what contract situation he's on here. He's going to have to you know, figure out a move for himself. So that way he's playing regularly. Maybe he has to go to Syria or somewhere he can get you know start playing because his career is... is you're getting to that point now where you know it's almost that time where you're you're out. So he needs to play. Um, is that's basically what I can say about him? Yeah, definitely. I mean, with the European Championships also coming up as well, the lack of game time will definitely seem to affect his uh, selection possibility. But then again, it's Garrett Southgate, and he seemed to have his favorite. So whether you're playing week in week out. You know, we, when you look at the likes of uh, James Ward pros who have failed to get into that England team, even when a uh, Phillips is not playing regularly for City, he was selected ahead of a uh, James Ward pro. So, ah, uh, with Southgate, you can never tell. To be honest, but, have his favorites, man. <laughs> right, exactly. So you know, uh, but for sure, even when Maguire wasn't doing step up. like Christopher said, even when Maguire wasn't doing well at United, right? He was slow. He's a slow center back. You know what I mean? You know, you would have Southgate pick him anyways. He's just one of the favorites. Luke Shaw could be right. injured. They're gonna pick. So he just have his people that he likes. You know, it doesn't matter. Yes, definitely, definitely. Uh, number of issues popping up there, but we move and you know that was a very good game for the neutrals. But then we I hit Sunday. And <laughs> before you move on, I mean, you right. know, um, Rafa is still West Ham is still on top of you know uh, Newcastle on the table, so. Even though they lost, they're, they're still a point ahead, you know? Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, it, it's a matter of consistency, to be honest. Uh, uh, it, it, it's hard to say. I mean, with nine games remaining, it's really difficult to say where these teams might finish in, in the league, to be honest. You know, it, it, they're, it, they're in at a point where they are no longer in the relegation fight, so to speak. So they are not worried about relegation, but neither are they really pressing with any great vigor for a European uh, position. So they are just in that comfort zone. They are in that sweet spot where they can't be relegated. But at the same time, a number of other quality teams are ahead of them in terms of vying for that uh, European position. So it's almost a case of seeing out the fixture and see where you land at the end. So they can possibly afford to play with a bit of freedom, which is probably why we had such a high-scoring game, that one ending 4-3. So the pressure is off, in all honesty, in terms of the league. So, you know, players can really just go out there, express themselves, play with a bit of freedom, and let the chips fall where they may. And as Christoph said, it was a very exciting game for the neutrals. But as I was moving on, JJ, it was the stark opposite Come Sunday when Man City faced off with Arsenal. A nil-nil stalemate, JJ. Talk to us about that game. Um, that game was, you know, to me, it was just basically a tactical game. Get out of there. Um, you know, get your get your, you know, the point. Be happy because they're Arsenal was playing a very low block. I mean, you know, City had the ball, the possession of the ball, over 77 percent possession of the ball. Um, even after the game in the post game, you know, with um, 
um, Bernardo Silva. He said, basically, it's hard to play a team where, where the wingers become fullbacks. So, you know, they already have a back six, and the wingers are back there. And I was, uh, you know, you have a back eight, you know, and plus strikers are, are basically – so they had the whole team back there. Um, and, yeah, so not surprising that um, Arsenal came out with a point. Uh, indeed. Uh, I'll come to the Arsenal man. Christoph, I mean, Arsenal seem to have gone to the Etihad to get a point and a point they got. So would you say job well done, Christoph, or were you hoping for more? Um, I don't think Arsenal went to go and get a point. I think Arsenal went there to get three points, but Arsenal had a plan to get those three points. And that plan was to try and win the match late. Didn't work out, but they were satisfied with getting one point. It keeps City behind them, and they are willing to gamble on Liverpool dropping points. Ah, uh, indeed. Yeah, speaking of which, you know, Liverpool is no past Arsenal and is no top of the table with a two point lead and a three point lead on City. So, really, I mean, at this point in time, it's really Liverpool's league to lose. What say you, JJ? Is Liverpool now the clear favorite? Um, honestly, Liverpool's gonna start having games. You know, I'm looking at Liverpool's schedule coming up here. Um, you got Sheffield United Thursday, you got us, Manchester United on Sunday, and then you're gonna start going back to that Thursday, Sunday format. How will that decimate? You got Salah coming back from injury. How will this now you're gonna start needing these big big squads? Coming down the stretch, you know, um, Atlanta in the Europa League is not an easy team, you know, and then Crystal Palace. So you got tough games coming up. Can Liverpool sustain all these games? I mean, you're you're you you, you can answer that question more than I can. What do you think? <laughs> ah, definitely. I mean, this is club's final season, JJ. You know, even if this team is running on fumes, they're gonna give their 100 percent for club. And my call is that Liverpool will. The title, you know, I'm um, making that very bold call at this point in time. You well, know, uh, Christoph seemed to disagree, but for me, I mean, this game to me is evident that Arsenal is not ready for the league. You you have a, a, an injured Man City, a wounded Man City, with the opportunity to be the defending champions, and you go to the Etihad pretty much lock shop and hope for the best. To me, that was the wrong approach, in my opinion, and Arteta should have gone out for the win, but he approached the game very defensive, as you mentioned, 10 men behind the ball. It was City that was taking the game to Arsenal, and Arsenal was merely playing on the counter, in all honesty, giving City the ball, or City not allowing them to play the ball with so many persons behind the ball, it was hard to transition into an attacking flow, and in all honesty, Arsenal did create the better chances in that game, albeit on the counter. But it was City really taking the game. And I thought it was just a wrong approach from Arteta. Or, as mentioned before, he went for the point. So he would have been satisfied with getting that point. But I think if you're going to become champions, you need to beat the defending champions. That is just my call. You can't be depending on the likes of a Aston Villa, a Brighton, you know, to, to then take points off Man City when you had the opportunity to do it yourself and failed. So uh, that's just my call. I don't think Arsenal is ready for this fight just by the mental approach. And it's going to be tough down the stretch. I know they have a North London derby coming up as well. And I believe they have Luton, Minnie. Yeah, Bayern and Munich of too. course, Bayern Munich uh, inside there in terms of the Champions League Champions spot as League. well, you know. It, it might be a case again, Christoph, where this team runs out of steam as some of the key players are playing every game and the full 90 Saka, minutes. Saka always come up limp, limping. You know, you have Martinelli. You know, um, they, they, they have so many players they rely on that always seem to be coming up gimpy after the game. And they now they got these... Coming down the stretch, does Arsenal, do you guys have enough players? You know, like the only team in the league that has like three squads is Man City. Every other team, which I, we don't know how Man City is allowed to have three squads. But they're the only team that can, you know, can literally lose players and replace them like that. You know, because they have a big, big squad. I mean, everybody else is decimated. Once you lose a few um, starting players, your team is on fumes. So I don't know. Let's see what Arsenal will do. 
when these tackles start flying in, because you know, Champions League, they start flying in these tackles, and it's, it's the game is fast. So these players are gonna come up gimpy, and can they handle it going down the stretch? We'll see. This is the question, Christoph. Can Arsenal know with now two points behind league leaders Liverpool? Can they find enough reserves to really end the season on top? I'm not expecting Liverpool to stay on top for much longer. Maybe one or two <laughs> games. Um, as all three teams, Man City, Arsenal, Liverpool, all have midweek games and all have, you know, relatively similar fixture lists. I would say in terms of Premier League, Liverpool probably has the easiest run to the no, final I think, that, the, 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 I think City might very well have the easiest run. I know Liverpool has Man U, uh, Spurs, Aston Villa, and Everton, you know, the Merseyside Derby. You know, those four games, and those games are also, I believe, three out of those four is away from home. So, to me, Liverpool has the, uh, the, the second hardest run. I would say City has the easiest run. Followed by Liverpool, and then I think Arsenal may have, in terms of the league position of the teams they should be facing. I think Arsenal has the hardest run. I believe they will face Manu, they will face Spurs, they will Manu, face Aston Tottenham, Villa. Aston Villa, yeah. But here's the thing for me why I think Liverpool runs out as team first. Liverpool is playing matches on a Thursday, right? And that is well, a I much mean, shorter at this point time, in time between really, fixtures it... for them. But the thing is, to me, it, with the position Liverpool is in now, I think Klopp will prioritize the EPL. That's my thought process, that he's um, going to so, play his best so, 11 in the so EPL. Liverpool and has abandoned the their, their, their great hope. You know, you, you got knocked out of the FA Cup, so you yeah, have I mean, abandoned the quadruple At the end of the day, you're out of the <laughs> FA Cup. You won the Carling Cup, so that's one trophy in the bag. I think he will prioritize the EPL, having no position himself at the top of the league with a two-point cushion. I think he will prioritize the 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 league over the Europa League. So his first, his best eleven will be saved for the EPL, and then he will make the rotations in the Europa League. That's just my call. And if I was the Liverpool manager, that would be my approach. On the other hand, I think. Arsenal and Man City might be fighting on both fronts and will still have to put out, you could say, a very good, if not their best 11 versus a Bayern Munich and versus a Real Madrid. So uh, I I'm think, not sure, you know. I, I think I, I, you have a good point there. Uh, sorry, Rafa, um, first of all. But I think, you know, momentum is important. These European, European games during the week are important because a lot of players get a chance to play you know, if you play Rafa during the week, and maybe there's a couple moves, Christopher, you're working on, but during the week you you, you got it, you feel like you got it during the week. So in a, on the game Sunday, you you know you're confident trying that. How are you going to control the ball? These are things versus you've been resting all week. Now you're thrown into a game. So how will that affect you know Liverpool coming down the stretch? But like you said, I think every team has a big game because if Liverpool goes in and throw away the, the trophy, then people say, okay, they're mentally. Are they a losing team? Or is it is it getting to them? It's very slippery slope to not I mean, win. At, at this point in time, either of the three can really win the league, to be honest. I mean, a two-point lead is nothing, really. That's less exactly. than a game. I mean, you draw a game or you lose a game, that two-point lead vanishes. So really, I mean, you're in pole position. Uh, Arsenal do have a superior goal difference in that sense. So let's say Liverpool draws a game and Arsenal goes on to win, then chances are Arsenal will be leading the league on goal difference. So Liverpool having Sheffield midweek, this is a prime opportunity for them to up their goal difference, to put 6, 7, 8 past Sheffield. You know, they are rooted at the bottom of the league. You know, this is an opportunity for Liverpool to up their goal tally. So I'm looking for a high-scoring game versus Sheffield come midweek. What says you, Christoph? Hard to say, because Brighton is a team you expect Liverpool to, to beat, but Liverpool struggles greatly against Brighton. It might be the way... It, it might just be a case where Brighton is just Liverpool's kryptonite at the moment. Um, All the other big teams seem to put on good performances against Sheffield, but we will have to see. But with Salah back, then you know, we could potentially be looking at a route. 
Ah, that is my anticipation. That's my expectation. I think if Liverpool can get an early goal, I would say within the first 20 minutes of that match, because obviously Sheffield is going to come and batten down the hatches, you know, probably all 10 players behind the ball. So it can go one of two ways. It can be a case where Sheffield comes to Anfield, two banks of four, full on parking the bus, pulling up the handbrake and say, hey, break us down. If Liverpool can find that early go-ahead goal, then, you know, I think it could be curtains. But it can go one of two ways. Sheffield really hanging in there and maybe Liverpool pinches it 1-0, 2-0 or early goal goes in and then it's the cat amongst the pigeons and then, as you say, you know, a road could possibly ensue. But definitely, if I was Klopp, I would be telling the guys, go their full force, the first 20, try to get that early goal and then try to pretty much get in as many goals as possible in order for you to up your goal difference and give yourself an additional cushion just in case this league title really boils down to a goal difference type of situation. Yep. I mean, it's, you know, it's not an easy pushover um, coming down here. So it's not like a guarantee to go in there and get 6-0. You, you know, Sheffield's fighting, you know, these teams, yeah, they might be going back down, but they want to get the experience too, playing in the Prem. Um, so they're going to fight and scrap. So um, it could be a dangerous team. You know, you can just don't overlook that team. And then, of course, you got United Sunday. You know, we're, we have Chelsea, so we have to worry about Chelsea. So we, we all have something to worry about. You know, ah, uh, that's right. I mean, uh, Liverpool do go to Manchester United, you could say a repeat of that FA Cup clash. So, Liverpool would have gotten that uh dress rehearsal in the FA Cup. So, I do, in fact, just looking at the way Manchester United have been playing, and in fact, if you looked at that FA Cup game, Liverpool should have taken that game easily. But again, you know, uh, poor finishing in front of goal, Manchester United eventually. You know, one that one. But Christoph, Man City has Aston Villa. How do you see that game playing out? Well, earlier this season, we did see where Aston Villa demolished them. So I, I, I'm I, betting on Aston Villa to have a plan to deal with them again. I'm not sure it will work the same, but I'm expecting it to be a, a relatively tight game where we're going to see Una Emery coming out with a, a game plan to try and stop them. Uh, we might even see him trying to copy Arsenal uh, and, and stop City playing. But we'll have to wait and see. But it will be a tight game. Um, Ultimately, you expect City to win. But based on how the reverse fixture played out, it will be an interesting match. Ah, indeed. So you're expecting a City win then, Christoph? I'm expecting City to win, but there's a strong possibility of Aston Villa <laughs> taking points off of them. And what of the Arsenal game? I mean, Arsenal uh, faces Luton. That should be a routine win for Arsenal, I would think. It, it, it should be a routine win, and it's a chance to rest uh, maybe two key players, uh, Saka primarily. Uh, we did see in the game against City where he did not look like he was 100% fit. Same thing with Martinelli because we, we did not see him starting. We saw him coming off the game late. Coming into the game late, we uh I think Arteta was expecting potentially to catch City on the counter attack late, um after they've thrown players forward trying to potentially get a goal, um you know interesting tactical game it is one of the first games I've ever seen where you know we had eight centre backs starting so um <laughs> it was interesting I I. Personally, think um, based on how City started that game, City expected Arsenal to capitulate to them, but Arsenal was it was more of Arsenal giving them the middle finger, saying, "Hey, since you think you're better than us, beat us. Since you think you're better, beat us." And it 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 is a it's very disingenuous of Bernardo Silva to make those comments after the match when Manchester City defended the exact same way that Arsenal did. Ah, indeed, indeed, indeed. You know, war of words, war on the pitch, master versus apprentice, you know. You could say it was a case of Man City versus Man City, so to speak, in terms of tactics. Both teams really just cancelling each other out and no team willing to take that gamble and really yeah. push players forward, you know. To me... uh. 
Man City gambled a bit more by bringing on the likes of a Grealish, the likes of a Doku. But again, those players fail to flatter, you know. Doku really Man. looking like a standout flop at this point in time, in all I, honesty. I, you know, I do believe just Man missing. City was two subs away from winning that game. I think Pep Guardiola made, it, made the incorrect subs. I think if he wanted to win that game, he should have removed Erling Haaland and removed Kevin De Bruyne. Arsenal's game plan was to neutralize those two. They were neutralized. Had they been removed, Man City might have had a better chance of winning. Ah, that would have been a very bold call. And I would say that would have been seen as a negative move, Christoph. I mean, taking off the league leading goal scorer, Haaland, and uh, one of the top assist men in the league, Kevin De Bruyne. Yeah. Okay. That would have been a, a massive move from Pep that could easily have backfired. Kevin De Bruyne is a top assist man who has been out the majority of the season and who, aside from his returning game, has looked poor for City since returning. J mm. Just the first game that he played is where he looked brilliant. Ever since then, he has looked poor. He has been, to me, to me, he has looked to be detrimental to City's way of playing at the moment. <laughs> we do see where, um, without the Bryna, we saw other players flourishing, like uh, uh, Phil Foden. Or and, Alvarez. And Alvarez. And with Erling Haaland, we have seen, and we've, se we've said it before, and we've seen where, I I'm thinking because Erling Haaland is so big and powerful, he does not expect it, and he does not know what to do when faced with opposition that will physically impose themselves on him. He was unable to do anything against William Saliba and Gabriel. Yeah, I guess what I see is that probably City becomes a bit more predictable if Kevin De Bruyne and Haaland is playing because you know, teams will know that that's the link-up that City is looking yeah. for, you know, that Kevin De Bruyne to Haaland type of pass or type of movement. So probably City becomes a little more predictable when you play the likes of Alvarez, he is, you know, a bit more unknown. So that element of predictability probably is less. But uh, Pep has a way of still finding results, so to speak. Uh, Emery, in the past, as you mentioned, the reverse fixture, did have an excellent game plan at Villa Park, which was executed to perfection. Leon Bailey, the Jamaican, coming up with the winner in that one. That game ending, I believe, 1-0 which was also followed by Aston Villa beating Arsenal as well. So it was back-to-back -back wins for Arsenal over Man City and, sorry, uh, uh, for Aston Villa versus Man City and Arsenal. So uh, Aston Villa do have what it takes. Uh, they do have the tactical plan in, in, in what Emre might bring. So as you mentioned, it might not be as clear-cut a game this game versus Aston Villa. And Aston Villa is one of those teams that will face all three teams vying for the title. Similar to Spurs. Spurs is another team that could have a big say in where the EPL uh, trophy goes because they will face all three teams as well. So uh, it might not be as clear-cut as one would think. But JJ, I'll bring you in at this point. I mean, who is your call? Who will win the league? Man, this is tough. It's um, I'm just looking at the schedule, like you know, like you just said, you guys mentioned. I mean, everybody, Liverpool has a tough schedule. Um, you guys might just favor the league in terms of just focusing on that. Will that backfire because your players just get rusty? Arsenal, do they have enough players <laughs> to sustain the run? Um, coming down the stretch, you know, we don't. I don't know. Are they still young? a young team that still just haven't done it before city have done it before. And so they have that mental edge uh, or, you know, I don't know. Will Liverpool pull this off? I don't, this is tough. My call will be city. You know, if I, if I was betting on this, I'm betting on city. It's your call. Okay. Well, I mean, definitely, as I said, you know, it's still a tight contest, nine games to go, uh, all to really play for in all honesty. And, it's too, it's really, in all honesty, it's really too close to call. You know, my call is really my sentimental attachment to Liverpool. You know, so naturally, you know, I'm going to support my team full hundred. So my call for sure is Liverpool and they have positioned themselves well in order to make a great push and a great showing going forward. So 
Uh, Liverpool is my call, but really, it would not be a surprise to me if another team was to take the title in the likes of a city. I, the team I would personally rule out is Arsenal. I don't think Arsenal will win the, 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 the league. I think this is going to be a fight between Man City and Liverpool. So for yes. me, Arsenal is out. I think, I think so. the I fight think will be out. between Liverpool and Arsenal. But your guess is as good as mine. But Christophe, any final thoughts on the weekend of action that was and the football coming up midweek? We have a number of EPL games. Well, a full slate of EPL games coming up Tuesday, Wednesday and uh, Thursday, I believe. Uh, a full slate of matches hmm. and also the teams return to action on the weekend. So it's really, you could say, it's a double game week of football midweek and also on the weekend but what's your thoughts uh the week that was and the week ahead um i thought it was an interesting um weekend of football i thought you know arsenal and arteta made a tactical choice you know uh they wanted to win against city but they were satisfied to get that draw to keep city behind them because if city goes ahead then they're probably not expecting city to drop any points um on the other hand they potentially are expecting liverpool to, to drop some points um you mentioned that you you think liverpool will do very well against manu since they have the template from the fa cup that's right that's right i i don't think so I think it will be a very tough game, not because I think Liverpool is bad or Man U is good or anything like that. Because Man U have beaten Liverpool in the FA Cup. They will be coming into this game very confident that they can collect some points off of Liverpool. Um, I think Arsenal will return to the top of the table by next week and will go on to win the league. Ah, uh, the, 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 the thoughts of Christoph there, you know, <laughs> I must say, very compelling, very compelling. You know, we definitely disagree on this one. I think Liverpool will hold firm at the top of the table beyond the next two game weeks. You know, uh, it may be later down before we see a few twists and turns, but I definitely think they will get the better of Manchester United. Uh, on the weekend, I don't think Liverpool is going to lose twice to this team. You know, if you looked at the game previously, it was Liverpool who had the better of play. And oh, if definitely. not for poor finishing, you know, it would have been an easy win. But as you say, it's a derby game and, you know, form goes through the window when it comes to a derby game. So, man, you do have the, 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 the capabilities to obviously beat Liverpool, but my money is on a Liverpool win. But JJ, your final thoughts on the EPL action thus far and what are your expectations going forward? Yeah, just real quick um, to wrap it up. You know, it's um, midweek coming up. So far, uh, for my speaking on my team, it's been a disappointing season. I think we should retain the coach. I don't think Ineos and uh, the Glazers have let go um, Eric Ten Hag. Give him a season. Uh, you know, and give him a bigger squad, if, especially if we make the Europa League uh, and see what we can do with a bigger squad. As far as the Premier League right now, it's very three teams fighting down the stretch. This is coming down to um, the wire here. And like you said, I think it's going to come down to cities. All three, Arsenal, don't count them out yet. You know, so um, they're right, in, right there in a the race. So it's going to come down to um, these last few weeks, you know, to see. And it might come down to the very last game, last day. So it's a great season so far. I like it. Ah, definitely one of those tight EPL races, you know, uh, a three-horse race. Oftentimes in the past, we've heard of a two-horse race, but definitely yeah. this season. And then even the, bottom of the, even the bottom of the prem with some of these teams fighting to stay up. I mean, Luton, Burnley, Sheffield. Then, of course, they got Nottingham Forest and Everton right there because of the whole point deduction stuff. So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's definitely heating up even down there as well. So we'll see. Ah, uh, all to play for, really, from all fronts, you know, from the league leaders, league winners, from uh, teams vying for a European position. You have that fight between Aston Villa Spurs, uh, possibly a Man U, but I would definitely say no. So I think that top four is, is, is being fought out between Aston Villa and Spurs. Uh, Man U may get one of those Euro League or uh, Europa League positions. And as you said, the relegation zone is hotting up as well. A few teams down there battling to stay in the EPL. And 
all to play for. Every team in the league really has something to play for. I guess this is why the EPL is regarded as the best league in the world, one of the most watched, if not the most watched league in the world. And it's this is really great for the fans and you know the growing following that the EPL is developing over the period. But I'll just like to thank JJ and Christoph for coming on board and sharing their profound thoughts, their profound opinions, you know, some very interesting calls and opinions there being expressed, uh, especially by Christoph. He's definitely sticking to his gunners. Yes, he is. <laughs> the true not fan of Arsenal. by, you know... But he's a, he's, a, he's a cool fan. He doesn't, he's not like a pushy Arsenal fan. It doesn't seem like, you know, most Arsenal fans are very pushy and cocky and then then you know, oh, we don't need that. We don't need that trophy. We don't, we don't need. So he seems like he really respects the competitions, and I like that. <laughs> ah, indeed, the level-headed one, Christoph. <laughs> but yeah. there you have it, viewers and subscribers. Ah, that's our thoughts. That's beating the press podcast for another week. Of course, please subscribe, share, and of course, leave your comments. Tell us who do you think will win this year's EPL trophy. But until next time. This is Rafa, signing off.